All right, let's talk a little bit about Cisco's umbrella architecture. Uh, this is a fun one. You know, this was uh, one of the core components of umbrella is uh, their DNS analysis. And the DNS analysis, a lot of the intelligence comes from an acquisition that was called OpenDNS. Uh, some of you may have used OpenDNS uh, back in its day before it was acquired by Cisco. Uh, since then, they've taken all the intelligence, all the great things that OpenDNS did for us, and they're able to take it and tie it into uh, the rest of Cisco's security portfolio. So it's really stronger than it's ever been, and it's a very, very powerful component that we've got kind of at our disposal when we want to look at how to secure our network. So much of our network is really focused on this idea that all the attacks are coming from the outside. So on our firewall, we've got the outside with the internet, of course, all the bad guys there. When we think about all this traffic coming into the organization, so of course the firewall looks at that traffic, uh, uses its access control list, uses its security levels to define that most traffic is not allowed in and we're only gonna permit exceptions. So for years we've had this very common methodology of always approaching security at the perimeter, looking at inbound traffic, thinking that that's where the attacks are. Our idea here is saying, okay, well, what if this system has already been attacked? What if there's a, a system that was maybe compromised and now it's come in and joined our network? How are we gonna stop that from occurring? And the way that it really happens is by looking at that outbound traffic. As traffic goes from the inside to the outside, we're gonna analyze it. Safe requests, those are gonna pass us right through. Anything that we know to be uh, malicious or unsafe, we can go ahead and block or log it. Again, you're the administrator. This is all gonna be under your control, but blocking and logging malicious traffic is a pretty good approach typically. Um, where I think it gets a little bit more exciting is how about unknown or risky URLs? There's new sites that are thrown up all the time. Uh, there's also domains that expire, and what people will do is they'll watch for domains that expire because they know they have a footprint or a history or a reputation, and they'll buy the expired domain and they'll just use it and they'll throw up a new website and they'll deliver uh, malware through it or they'll you know, relay spam through it. So one of the things that we can do is take a look at URLs, take a look at the IP addresses associated with them, and we'll watch for things. We'll watch for like geolocation shifts. Was something previously registered in Madison, Wisconsin, and now it's being hosted in the Ukraine. That would look a little bit funny. So there's so much intelligence behind what's going on with DNS that if things look suspicious, if they look like they've changed, we can go, all right, I'm not gonna jump in and drop it right away, but I'm gonna get a little bit more involved. And the way that it does that is through proxying. And that is, if a user's out in the field, we're gonna tunnel their traffic to Cisco's server. Cisco is gonna proxy that. It's gonna do the SSL decryption if appropriate. It's gonna put the content into a sandbox. It's gonna analyze the heck out of it and figure out what's happening. So uh, we've really got a couple different approaches or three different approaches uh, for dealing with traffic. Safe, blocked, and then the stuff that's unknown or in the middle. So looking a little bit deeper uh, in the way that the umbrella architecture work, basically we go, I wanna resolve some IP address. Uh, or some domain name. So we say cloudapp.example.com. Well, we know that that's uh, a benign uh, system. It's not hostile. So we say, okay, 198.51.100.1, the user goes right through. Now they try to go to, in this example, internetbadguys.com, because we know that that was a hostile website, we'll handle it right there in DNS, and we'll say, you don't wanna go there. And we can actually just steer them into this page that says, hey, this site was blocked due to a security threat, and it just shows them a link. Um, so again, we can control where people connect by analyzing their DNS traffic. So if you were to purchase Cisco Umbrella, it's gonna come in a couple different flavors or, or packaging sizes. And that's what we see here. There's a DNS uh, security essentials. There's also uh, what we call the DNS security advantage. And you've got the, uh, secure internet gateway essentials, as they call it. So kind of looking through these, um, the DNS security essentials, for anybody coming from that open DNS product, this is gonna seem more similar because it really focuses on DNS. It's doing things like blocking domains that are known to host malware, phishing, uh, botnet, et cetera. If you've used the botnet filter before, uh, you're similar with this style of, uh, of filtering. Uh, we constantly get updated threat intelligence from Cisco and from the Talos group, and then we can apply that to new traffic flows that are trying to be formed. 
Additionally, beyond the threats, we can use web filtering. So think of just web content. Are there certain categories of websites that would be inappropriate for your users to go to during the weekday? Well, if that's the case, we could say you know, these categories for this group of users are not allowed between you know, this hour and that hour. Uh, so that's pretty handy. Of course, we can create policies and reports, and we can tie into uh, other components. There's APIs that are available. That's the essentials. So just kind of looking at this, heavy analysis of DNS. And we also have the ability to not only look at threats, but also do some policies in terms of content. When we jump down to the security advantage, um, this is a little bit more powerful. Uh, one, it can block direct IP connections that would otherwise bypass DNS. So instead of using DNS, I can say, just go to this IP address. Well, security advantage includes an IP blacklist, so we're not just looking at DNS names, making it a touch more intelligent. Additionally, it can use that, speaking of intelligent, intelligent proxy, which has the capability to analyze unknown traffic. So anything risky or unknown, we can jump in and do SSL decrypt, we can apply AMP, and we can really do some stuff that's content aware. So this is starting to get a little bit smarter. Um, going down to the Secure Internet Gateways Essentials, or SIG Essentials, um, this uses something called Secure Web Gateway, which allows us to proxy all the web traffic for both VR, uh, URLs, AMP inspection, SSL decryption, uh, web filtering, category filtering, threat cloud, uh, I'm sorry, threat grid, and their cloud sandbox, we can tie all of that in uh, at the cloud level. We can use a cloud-delivered firewall, which gives us layer three, layer four policies. We can block IP addresses and port numbers. Uh, and it also gives us access to a product called the Cloud Access Security Broker, which allows us to discover and block shadow systems based on URLs and then create policies with granular control for specific cloud-based applications. So it gives us some cloud intelligence, gives us a, a firewall that's much more granular. So think of these as, I guess we could call it bronze, silver, and gold. You just see how maybe you even just number them, one, two, three, how the product gets more sophisticated as we go down through the list, and they include more capabilities. So is it fair to say that Cisco Umbrella is just DNS filtering? Of course not. I wouldn't even say Cisco Umbrella is DNS filtering. DNS is one of the things that it can do, but it's also a web gateway, again, with policies. It's a cloud-delivered firewall with layer three, layer four criteria. It's that access security broker, and again, it gives us that interactive threat intelligence because we can jump in, we can do the SSL decrypt, we can pull apart the files that are being transferred, we can do analysis for anything we haven't seen before, and we can give back really good information. So the use cases are pretty straightforward, right? Everything in the organization needs DNS. Everything in the organization could potentially be compromised. So why wouldn't we want to monitor who's connecting to who on the internet, log it, and of course apply policies to do some restrictions. Uh, as far as configuring uh, support for Umbrella, one of the slick things is it works so well for mobile users. What this is really about is just putting Cisco as the man in the middle between you and whatever it is that you're connecting to. And by placing them in the middle, they can do a lot of the screening. Of course, we've got policies under our control. We can whitelist and blacklist what's necessary, but we're not even thinking about it. In the back of the, you know, kind of like, in the back of the equipment, underneath the hood, behind the scenes, we're getting this constant feed of new threat intelligence. We're analyzing all the connections back and forth, um, getting lots of good visibility into it. Uh, as far as deploying this, um, to our internal users, whether it's within the campus LAN or even within the data center, all you've got to do is set up your DHCP scopes or static IP address configurations to point to Umbrella's DNS servers. Uh, alternatively, you may have internal DNS servers that you manage with all of your resources. They're going to find things locally, but anytime they perform recursion, we can ask them to use Umbrella's DNS servers. We say, why don't you look upstream to Umbrella? And when you do that, for a lot of us, what happens is you've got a firewall at the company, you've got 100% of your traffic coming through that firewall, and of course it's hitting the DNS server. Now when somebody tries to get to www.evil.org, we go, hey, the public IP address of your firewall just tried to get to evil.org. And I shrug, I go, that doesn't help me. Everybody inside is being padded. 
so I have no real visibility into what's happening with my users. If I wanted that, they've got right here an umbrella virtual appliance, and we can deploy that internally. Really lightweight, it's just Cisco's DNS server. It's gonna be, when we download it, it's customized for our company so they know who actually downloaded it and can apply the right policies. But basically, we deploy this internally, uh, maybe throw it on top of UCS, on top of VMware, and we'll point our internal users to that. Not only can we host internal DNS here, but we're also gonna have visibility into what those internal IP addresses are. In other words, what's the RFC 1918 address space? Um, which IP addresses were assigned to which users at what time and what users were requesting that data at that time? So again, much more granular insight into what's happening inside of a company uh, than we would have just using a PAT gateway. So as far as deploying it, it couldn't be any easier. You know, go into your DHCP settings, wherever you host those, could be a server, could be a switch, a router, and we just go into it and we set the DNS server to point to Cisco Umbrella. That's all. And if it were me, I'd, I've been doing this for probably 15 years. We can go to a router that connects us to the internet, and on that router, we'll have an access control list inbound on the inside interface. And in this ACL, I'll deny TCP and UDP traffic from my internal network going anywhere on UDP or TCP 53, right? So this is gonna drop all DNS traffic. At this point, DNS is broken. What you could inject above it is a permit statement, and we only allow Umbrella. Cool, right? So even if somebody tries to do uh, a manual configuration of their DNS server and go around what we've configured, we're gonna drop their traffic. And we'd be better to put a log keyword at the end of this access list so it can kick a syslog notification to us and say, hey, this particular device just tried to do a DNS query for the first time in three years, right? Could be an indication of compromise. Um, again, it's just an access list triggering based on a port violation, but we'd say, why was that server trying to use a custom DNS server? Either it was a user goofing around, or it was some type of malware trying to get out. So this is something I typically try to do. Um, then what I'll do is, inside of the company, set up my own DNS server. This could be uh, your virtual appliance of Umbrella. Uh, for some of us on a little bit of a budget, you could just be a Raspberry Pi, <laughs> running Pi Hole. And it wouldn't be a whole lot different. Um, it, it would in terms of capabilities, right? Umbrella is much smarter. But in terms of what it's doing, even with my Pi Hole, I point all my devices to my Raspberry Pi, and my Raspberry Pi is responsible for doing DNS SAC and DNS crypt to all the traffic that goes out. I don't have to, want to have to worry about getting a Nintendo Switch or a Samsung Smart TV or Philips light bulbs, which just had a new vulnerability come out today. Uh, or, <laughs> or any of this other stuff, you know? I don't want it to have to think about how to do secure DNS lookups. It probably can't. So I can say, go ahead and do unsecured DNS, which is what most of us are doing all day, every day. I say, go give that unsecured DNS to my Pi Hole. Or if I had a, an umbrella device internally, I would point it to my umbrella device. And then the umbrella device is gonna be responsible for not only performing the integrity check, this is what we know as DNS SAC. Did the answer come from an authoritative source? But it can also encrypt the message. This is what the standards-based solution is DNS crypt, but there's a few different approaches to this. Uh, again, by encrypting, it means that our service provider can't analyze our web traffic by looking at the DNS queries and then resell that information to third parties, like a lot of service providers do. Um, additionally, when we're ever doing um, when we switch hats and we want to do something that's a bit more malicious um, inside of a network, you know, if I want to discover what's around me, instead of just going out and doing port scans and trying to do OS fingerprinting with really noisy Nmap scans, you can just sit back and listen to the traffic. Listen to what people ask for. A lot of times you might even hear um, multicast DNS where people are trying to resolve mistyped domains. Um, or just domains that are legitimate domains. If I can do man-in-the-middle attack and I can get DNS traffic to flow through me 
and it's unencrypted, which it typically is, I can look at that DNS traffic and I can figure out who you are and what you do. I can figure out what type of antivirus you run because you're checking for updates. I can tell what type of browser you use because you're checking for updates. I can tell if you're using Notepad++. I can tell if you're using Java. I can tell if you're using so many things because when you launch that application, it tries to call home for an update. Now, the response to whether or not an update's available is not always encrypted. So I could forge the response and say, no, there is no update. Even simpler, I could just drop the DNS request. So let everything go through so that you believe the network is working as it should. But when I see an update for virus definitions, when I see uh, a request for a DNS to get to the update site for, say, your Microsoft patches, we'll just set that DNS request, we'll forge the reply to 127.0.0.1, and now not only have I identified the applications that you're using, but I should know the version of the application, and then I can stop you from patching the application. So stop that update process that's going to not only identify what you're using, but prevent it from being patched. Wait for an exploit to come out, use the exploit against the target, and you never had to do an Nmap scan. Scary, uh, but really effective. So DNS is something that just not enough people are, are looking at or are really protecting like they should be. Uh, Umbrella is a fantastic approach to it. Like we said, there's a couple different uh, solutions that you can get in at different price points. And the first thing, the most important thing is to start with, of course, even just getting the essentials and going after uh, our DNS traffic to secure it. And then we can go out further from there and start building our policies, doing SSL decryption and so forth. Uh, as far as looking at DNS uh, configuration, let's say that we use the umbrella virtual appliance. We'll deploy that internally. So what we can do is we can say, you know, for DHCP and DNS, go to this one particular DNS server. However, um, when you get to that DNS server, it's our virtual appliance. Our virtual appliance is resolving all DNS entries for local uh, records on itself. And then for everything else, we can encrypt it, we can proxy it, we can pass it on on behalf of those users. Additionally, having that internal virtual appliance gives us visibility into the pre-NAT IP addresses, and that's going to help us out with our logging.